What is up guys, it is the Sound Alchemist, and today we're back, yeah that's right, we are back at it, with 40 facts on the Warhammer 40k universe. Today we are talking about a fan lore from a longtime subscriber by the name of Austin Palmer. So today we are diving into his very own chapter called The Sky Dragons. Uh, and we continue on with the dragon theme for fan chapters. So with that being said guys, send your lore over to us if you want us to feature it in a video. Um, if you guys have images of your army or if you got pictures of your models, even better, send them on over. And without further ado, let's dive into these 40 facts on the Sky Dragons. Born from ash, risen as pillars, betrayed by man, they are the 11th Legion. The Sky Dragons are augmented with bones like dragons themselves, for they wield these in combat. The Psyker's mouth fume flames of warp energy, and they are adept in air fighting, close combat weaponry, and psychic powers. The only known by their gene seed is that they are druids in volcanoes of Fenris Sector. Flames must burn the body, but not the soul. These are the words of the Sky Dragons, for that very task must be accomplished to become a druid of this legion. Awoken from the flames with the burning knowledge of the Emperor will give them the ability that they call Flame Walking. Flame Walkers are given the task to find the flame that will rekindle the Emperor's life. And it is known that the Emperor would run into the situation of one of his loyal sons turning and putting the Emperor into an unknown stasis. When the Primarch of the Sky Dragons, Drathid Sky, was found, he was inside an egg, but out hatched a man with skin of black scales and horns. When he was found, bandits tried to claim this young Primarch for a reward, for their boss, Kelgrit Twohammer. He was a crooked arms dealer in the Fenris Sick Sector on the planet of Skythra. But little did these low-end crooks know that this was the son of the Emperor. They thought for sure that this was a one-of-a-kind creature that could fetch them a pretty penny. The Primarch did not struggle at first, for he was only the size of a young boy. Drathrid was already adept in flame walking, psychic techniques, and many other natural-born augmentations. They grabbed him and punched the Primarch in the gut and threw him into the cage. This made a fire stir within him, for the hatred was not something that he deserved. His scales turned from black to red, and a fire erupted in an aura around him, blasting the cage apart and throwing the men off of their carriage. He dove at the man who hit him, and he put a bone coming out of his fist straight through the man's face. The Primarch grabbed the man's spear and ran into the volcanoes. For many years, he meditated within this volcano, until finally he arose. A man very large, with a dragon-like face, came out. He went to the villages all throughout this world, and he killed each and every bandit. Then he began to create weaponry for the humans within this planet, turning their planet into a thriving civil world. This brought the eyes of the Emperor, and soon he was joined into the ranks of the Imperium. Always seeing to the people and wanting them to strive was in his genetics, but the humans of other planets did not see this Primarch as a great man. If anything, they saw him as a sort of demon. Time passed, and eventually the Primarch and his legion were sent into the warp to try and find a way to save the Emperor in the future to come. Lost in the warp for perhaps 500 years, the Sky Dragons returned to only find their planet destroyed. In anger, this Primarch demanded to know what had happened, and it was the Imperium itself the men of the Ashen Militarum that nuked their planet until the core erupted throwing the volcanoes to cover the planet in lava. The Emperor once said that whoever did this would long be killed, but this wasn't enough. One life for his people and planet? No, this couldn't be. Drathrid Sky took the rest of what was left of his fleet, and he vanished with the help of the Space Wolves, who were supposed to kill the rest of them. 
Lehman Ross knew that he was more loyal than a traitor, and he let him go. Never seen or heard of again, they slipped into the stars, until finally the darkness returned to the galaxy, and so Drathard Sky and his legion came forward to change the Imperium forever. And with that, that concludes the first part to the lore on the Sky Dragons. Um, so, this is a good rough draft in my opinion. Um, if you want my constructive criticism, I'd say uh, you've, you've, got, you've got a good basis. Um, there's a few things here and there where you could like have a little bit of work done. Uh, for example, having a Primarch up here, you know, dragon-like, and having the, uh, I believe it's called Firewalk ability, Flame Walkers. That seems a little too overpowered, because um, basically you're saying, like, your Primarch can't be harmed, he can, like, re regenerate and whatnot, and, uh, I mean, at this point he seems really overpowered, and the lore kind of doesn't really fit in with the 40k aspect of it. Um, like I said before, you've got a good basis, um, you just gotta fine-tune it, so to speak. Um, I do like the part where you're giving him motivation in searching for the, I believe you called it the Eternal Flame, uh, which was the fire that would revive the Emperor. That was pretty cool. Um, this was a this was a pretty pretty interesting uh, dive into the lore of the Eleventh Legion, um, but again, I feel like there's an overwhelming amount of uh, dragon-like themes with these fan chapters that they all just kind of blend into one another. So I feel like. Um, not just for you, Austin, but for anybody making their own lore, maybe you could try to like incorporate other aspects of dragons. For example, um, maybe they hunt the dragons in this world, and their weapons are used by like dragon bones and scales and stuff like that. But not make that the main aspect of your chapter. Um, or it might just be that they've hunted dragons before. Um, or maybe they use them as like like how the Exodites use like dinosaurs and whatnot as like vehicles and steeds and whatnot. So maybe that's a better um, a better avenue to kind of explore with your chapter. But like I said, I like it. I like it. Um, just keep keep working at it. Keep um, fine tuning your your lore, and um, eventually it'll it'll go the way you want it to. Um, Really, really good looking army though. I really like all the units there. Um, I really look forward as to how they'll look once they're 100% done. But for now, good job with this lore. Thank you for sending it to us. And here I am showcasing it to the community. So, now it's up to you guys to let Austin know how he can improve his lore. Uh, maybe you guys like it the way it is. Or maybe he should change... Um, like I said, the psychic abilities of it or something like that. Let them know in the comments, guys. Um, that's pretty much all I've got for today. Please sit tight because we got more 40k lore coming to you guys. Um, like I said, I've been working on my own Celestial Sun lore here and there. And I've got a few pictures commissioned as well as I've got a few models being painted. So hopefully I can showcase all that to you guys if not next week, the week after that, but uh, sit tight. And with that being said, that's all I've got. As always, I'm the Sound Alchemist, part of One Mind Syndicate, and I'll catch you guys tomorrow.